Good morning, folks. The sun is waking up a bit here. We've got sunspots, some small solar flares, peripheral activity, and also another day of amazing news articles, so let's get to it. We're starting at spaceweathernews.com. We're looking at a not-so-calm last 24 hours on our star. We see activity incoming at the active region, but also across the Earth-facing disk. Northern filament collapsed this morning, and as the smaller flares kicked in, the plasma filament on the south whipped around the quadrant, and upon its descent, triggered another plasma filament motion through the southern Earth-facing latitudes. It does seem that the release of the filament propelled a short uptick within the region itself, able to crack up to B-class flare range and even briefly into C-class, and which has a fair amount of size to the spots and numerous umbra, but I can say that there is a bit more spread between the lead and trailing umbras than it appeared yesterday, which matters because the magnetism appears to be split that way as well. Let's come to the solar wind, where the slightest of intensifications is underway, but the telemetry is nothing scary. This is more of a shifting profile than a true impact shock wave. Nothing going on geomagnetically as of yet, and little is expected. Tough to say if these coronal holes will have the equatorial IMF reach to affect our planet, at least more than the weak impacts we've seen of late. The only lithospheric note for the last day is an uptick swarm that hit Taiwan, got as high as 6.1 before backing off in the latter half of the day. Suppose we'll also mention North Atlantic refuses to settle down from Iceland to Greenland. Definitely an uptick there. On to the case of the disappearing star. But here, the mystery solved leads to more unanswered questions. They have come to believe that an eclipsing binary is acting on the visibility here, but the problem is that none of the three mainstream binary formation mechanisms allows this particular relationship and particular pattern. Models and math are essential, but the visible observations of the real universe trumps the models. Up next, modified Newtonian dynamics is one of many dark matter alternatives that have been popping up these days given the fact that nobody can find dark matter. This one plays off our recent story about dwarf satellite galaxies in the Milky Way, Andromeda, and Centaurus A. You'll remember the observations here didn't support dark matter models, and so now we have a paper immediately taking notice of the dark matter debunking, and this is the tenacity and urgency we need to see among physicists these days. Up next, the awesome Araquari star. Well known for its beauty and its cosmic jet blasting through the structure, this Chandra time-lapse focusing on the X-ray component of the composite wowed us all a few years ago. Now it has received its highest resolution imaging ever. The ways in which we are able to see the fine structure of the cosmic jet are now indescribably telling of its dynamics. Amazing shots in that paper. But there's something else while we're here on this star and its imagery. The primary aesthetically beautiful visible structure is the cosmic jet blasting through what looks like a ring. Not unlike the dust ring recently found around another system of note, one can't help but wonder if there is a similar dust belt around our aquarium as well, something to keep an eye on. Folks, those upgrades and the increase in the price of the Disaster Prediction app is at hand. If you are hoping to get it at the cheaper rate, definitely got to do it now. If you missed last night's recap video, we hit a lot of important topics. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow right here, but right now it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.